What's going on? It's your boy Sintel with the Intel, and we are getting ready to do a series watch along for The Expanse. This happens to be one of my all time favorite sci fi series, maybe next to Battlestar Galactica and Star Trek The Next Generation. Those are the first two that I can think of off the top of my head. I'm a huge fan, and we are actually coming to a close regarding them telling this story. I believe they had maybe like one more. Uh, uh, season after this and some possible movies so this is probably gonna be a pretty big deal uh, it's taken some some different routes as compared to uh, how it is in the book but that has not taken away from the quality of the series as a whole if you are a fan then you already know what's up if you are new to it yo do yourself a favor and start off with season one you won't be disappointed if you love sci-fi this is for you but before you get started make sure you hit that subscription button click the bell icon so that you can get up-to-date notifications for the next one that comes out for part two, part three, and on and on, hitting that bell icon is how that is going to keep you in the loop. All right, so hey, I'm super excited. Um, let's go ahead and get this bad boy going. Mm. My name is Marco Inaros. I uh, am the commander. So much happened in the first season. The Alex, reply. It was a stroke. It's a risk we all. Oh, I can't believe Alex died. That's nuts. <laughs> Last dance, go. That's the one I pick. Did you come here to help me? I guess I did. You just come on up. Right? Like, she just tried to kill you, man. <laughs> now they're part of the squad. Planet two. <laughs> Hey, you remember those old school structures from, from last season, right? Laconia. Ah. Well, goodness. So in case you uh, haven't been keeping up with the previous seasons, Laconia is where the Marines ran to when they went through the ring. Man. That was just crazy when they dropped those rocks. Mains that keeps pissing us off. I'm on it. Good. Oh, it's not the same without the old Martian. Golly. Alex, man. Oh. <sighs> I mean, I guess peaches will grow on me. Oh, that's Philip, isn't it? I bet. Marco, 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 Marco. He looked like Prince a little bit, <laughs> like a space prince. Paisley Park and Purple Rain. At least we killed him. Yeah, that's a big mess up, though. Yeah, I mean, I wonder who, who Drummer's hanging out with now. Because she's not with Marcos anymore. She's just like solo and rogue. Wow. <laughs> when in doubt, just beat it to death, huh? Oh yeah, he's struggling. Either with the guilt or the fact that he misses mama. It's probably both. At your discretion. Something up? Possibly. No. Is it just me or is like everything darker? Much longer I can bear it. Oh, it's breaking my heart. It's like, it's like watching mommy and dad, mommy and daddy fight. <laughs> you shouldn't they laugh at you, huh? Come on, don't do this. Why? The fuck you gonna do about it, huh? Huh? <laughs> Whoa, come on, man. Don't shoot your people. Why would you do that? Oh, you are completely unhinged, my guy. This dude. 
We need better than good. Hmm. Come on, Bobby. Yes. All right. Yo, I like the tone. Um, that feeling of just complete and total utter desperation. Everything is black and dark and and in a space where there just seems like there's no hope. Um, it's easy to pick up on it. Uh, I like that. Um, I'm glad that they addressed Alex. Like I said before, Alex is absolutely one of my one of my favorites. You know, this is my, my man got the 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 Texas Southern drawl. He doesn't necessarily look the part, but he acts it out. And, and, and he's he's literally like your, your wingman, and you can see it affecting the, the crew of the Rosinante. Um, I, I don't know how I feel about Peaches just yet because we didn't really get a chance to fully. We know her. We got a chance to know her like last season a little bit, which is which is pretty cool during the uh, during the prison break and the and the stand while they were trying to uh, repair the ship at the uh, in the rich people's neighborhood. So we got a chance to to kind of see her a little bit, and then of course we got a chance to see her a little bit before that when she was literally trying to like kill everybody on the Rosinante, including Holding. <laughs> so it is a little odd to kind of see her be a part of the crew but she certainly doesn't have the the same love as of yet that that alex brought um we got a chance to see a lot of philip on this one um marcos his father who is the the leader of the free navy got a lot of screen time uh last season but you didn't really get a chance to see the full repercussions of of philip's actions um so the pressure is getting to him i think that's like the theme of this entire episode is just pressure right like what is this pressure doing to everybody that's that's living in these worlds um and you can see it everything is darker darker clothes darker setting darker lighting you see a lot of reds it's a lot of just despair that's kind of in the air so it seems like the good guys are kind of like on their heels marcos is seems is seemingly getting stronger um you can really feel it uh, the production quality as a whole just seems to be getting a little bit better. I've always liked uh, the special effects that they've done with showing some of the ships and how movement is done in space is like one of the things that really makes the show um, really good because they, they add a lot of, uh, I guess, scientific realism as much as you can add for a show like this that's drastically different than something like like star wars or even something drastically different uh, as compared to something like star trek it tries to add more elements of realism and then when you clean that up and you clean that look up it, it it just really works and it's working well so far with with the show um it's, it's <laughs> i'm ready to kind of like get things moving with everything i know everybody's in a bad place um and that's fine uh but um, I guess I'm just anxious, right? Because I don't know who's going to make it, who's going to survive this. Uh, drummer ship uh, is the same thing. You know, I think she's probably on the run because she can't. I don't think she can go back to to the United Federation of Planets or whatever, the Mars Earth Coalition, um, because she was working directly with Marcos and she's on the run from Marcos. Um, that scene with a member of her crew just messing up the shot was was pretty pivotal because everybody's beat and tired and exhausted it seemed like the only people that aren't exhausted is marcos he's the only one that you know chilling in paisley park seeing purple rain looking like prince <laughs> having himself a good old time um so the ball is definitely in his favor when we left last season we left with one of the martian ships uh kind of like disintegrating right um I think they showed it very briefly when you saw James Holden. He looked like he had uh, a picture of of one of the ships going through like one of the uh, one of the rings and, and kind of like self destructing. So I think he's starting to piece two and two together. It does make you wonder like where the where the rest of uh, the Mars ships went to go along with it. Uh, you know, I love uh, Avasarala, the the actress that plays her. It just absolutely kills it because she just she's so comfortable cursing. <laughs> Yo, and her voice is just legendary. Uh, you you can't beat that. Uh, I'm excited to see episode two. Uh, this was a good setup. It lets you know that it feels very, uh, I guess, Empire Strikes Back. I guess that's the way because everybody's kind of like on their heels. They're, they're reeling from the loss that they just took. Um, and then we get a chance to see, you know, hopefully some of these pieces move together and they can get these W's because they, they need a win. Abasarla is right. Um, we're at that point now where if we don't get a win everything is going to fall apart because there was like a bit of a hint that maybe possibly um uh naomi was telling uh, amos that yo you know you probably don't need to be here and 
I know in that moment, it, it could have been interpreted as you don't need to be here right now because you're, you're pissing me off. But I got a hint that Amos was taking it and interpreting it as uh, I don't have to be here like on this ship. It seems like he's found like some solace and peace uh, within Peaches. So he may be OK. And the only thing keeping him loyal to everything is Holden, which is interesting because if you watch like the very first season, you know, all of his loyalty was, was to Naomi and you know he loved her like a sister and for her to like take a snipe and bite at him um and then him being like kind of like agreeing like maybe i do need to get need to go but the only thing keeping him to the ship is holding that that's saying a lot right there so uh man i hope i hope <laughs> that they uh uh don't get rid of amos because to me he's like one of the last you know bits of the heart and soul of the show but you never can tell with these things, right? Um, you know, if you, even if you read the book, things go a little bit differently. All right. So uh, with that being said, hey, thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, make sure to check out episode two, which is coming right around the corner. Uh, make sure you hit that subscription button and click the bell icon so you can get up to date notifications all anytime the new stuff drops. That's how we can all hang out and kick it together. You know, man, love to all my Expanse fans out there. Let me know what you're thinking in the comments regarding the first one. Hit those thumbs up button, man. That's how YouTube knows you're digging what we're giving you. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and holler at you. Peace out.